Hi, my name is Dan Klein and I'm here today to show you the basics of using the new tech 3 play replay system, especially how we use it here for our Eye in the Sky productions here at Canton High School. Now this video should give you a decent understanding of how to use the basics of the 3 play system and a lot of it's going to be tailored towards specifically how we use it for Eye in the Sky, but you should still be able to get a general sense of how to use the new tech 3 play. First things first, you're going to want to make sure everything's plugged in correctly so you can actually turn the 3 play on to get going. So take a look around back. Make sure the CG power strip is on, and the studio power strip should also already be on. Now that it'll actually turn on, locate the 3 play in the tower, open it up, and turn it on. While you're waiting for it to boot up, you can turn on the monitor that you're going to be using it on. Now that you're on the main menu, you're going to be starting a new event. So click here to name your event. Whatever it is, just try to be descriptive, so if you need to go back to it, you can. But definitely keep the date in. Depending on what you're shooting, the settings might be a little different, but for Eye in the Sky, these are the settings we always use, and they're definitely a good go-to. Now that all of the settings are set, click Create Session, and then Start Session. If you're freaking out right now because not all the cameras are showing up, just hold your horses. It's not to worry. What you're going to want to do is head over to your router. Hit Slow 1 on the right, and then Gym 1 on the left and now your first camera feed should be coming in. Then, hit Slow 2 on the right, and then Studio 2 on the left. Finally, hit Slow 2 on the right, and Gym 3 on the left. Now that all the camera feeds are coming into the 3Play, you may notice that some of them are coming with audio. To get rid of the audio, you're gonna go into the top right corner of each camera grid. Click on the little gear settings button, and you're gonna wanna mute it. All right, we're almost done setting up now. On the bottom of half of your screen, you're gonna see your playlist banks. Go down there, and what you wanna do is label bank one, page one, the first quarter, bank one, page two, the second quarter, bank one, page three, the third quarter, bank one, page four, the fourth quarter. Now, the names you'll give these pages will vary depending on what you're doing. If it's volleyball, you might do set one, set two, set three, set four, set five, etc. as the different pages. But this is going to be so you have each section of the game's highlights separate, so you'll be able to find them easier. So here's some important things to keep in mind. You don't want to panic if the camera feeds aren't coming through immediately. You just have to go over to the router to figure it out. Make sure you mute the cameras so your replays aren't coming through with any sound. And also, you want to label your playlist banks. Click under your A output. Then, click on whichever camera view you want to be there. Then do the same thing for output B. I typically have the wide shot as A. So now you're recording, and these are the clips that you have recorded or are recording. Now, possibly the simplest way to use the 3Play is to be recording, and then when a good play occurs, you stop it with the wheel, backtrack to the beginning of the play, and wait until there is an opportunity to play it. However, in doing this, you can only have one replay ready at a time, and you can't even save them. So this is what we do. In and out points will save your sanity while you're working the three play for slow-mo. Each time you hit out and then in, you make a new clip. I like to make a new clip after each point in volleyball or after each time play moves from one side of the court to the other in basketball. And you don't have to stress too much about this. You can figure out what works best for you, but for me, this is definitely a good starting point. Now for the importance of the clips. So let's say the home team just scored a great basket and you're already starting a new clip because play is about to move from one side of the court to the other. But this was such a great basket that you want to get a replay of it or your tech director tells you that we should get a replay of it. So here's what we do. 
first step is to find out which camera angle is the best one to show the replay on. As you can see, your clip list is broken up into columns by camera angle, and these vertical columns, Cam 1, Cam 2, Cam 3 views, coincide with your Cam 1, Cam 2, Cam 3. Typically your wide shot camera will have a decent view of the play, so this should be your go-to camera when taking views for replays. However, you want to try to show the replay from a different view than it was originally broadcasted on. And usually, the wide shot will be your tech director's go-to choice for the broadcast as well. One more thing, you want to have some variety in the angles you're using for your replays. If, for example, you wind up playing through a bunch of replays in a row, you don't want it all coming from the same angle. Spice it up a little bit. However, the most important thing is that you can see the entire play in the replay. If it just so happens that there's only one camera that's doing that for you, you take that camera view for every single replay and there's really nothing you can do because you need to be able to see the entire play. So now, you want to select the one box that coincides with the camera you want and the clip you want. Now that you have it selected, hit enter on your keyboard and give it a short but descriptive title. The more descriptive the better so your tech director can tell the announcers what the replay is going to be about. Get the name of the player down if you know it, but if not, something like Canton 3 or Great D is good. Now that it has a title, send it to your playlist by hitting Add to Playlist. The most important thing to keep in mind while carrying out this step or any other step is that the game is still going on. While you're finalizing this one replay, there could be another better play happening at the same exact time. So using the three play is all about multitasking. Keeping in mind that the game goes on, click down into your playlists and notice that there are columns labeled in point and out point. If you have multiple clips in your playlist, you can play through them all consecutively, which is a great thing. However, they're going to be as long as they originally were when you were making in out points to make new clips. And you don't want too much time between each replay if you play through them consecutively. So here's what we do to shorten that up. On the clip you just sent down to your playlist, go over to In Point and click and hold down on the time next to the clip and under In Point. Drag your mouse a little to the left or a little to the right to make the In Point earlier or later to get just a few seconds before the actual play starts or occurs. Then do the same thing under the Out Point. After doing this, you should have your play surrounded on either side by a few seconds of footage, called pre-roll and post-roll. Congratulations! Your first replay is ready to go. Let your tech know that you have a replay ready, but continue to accumulate replays using the same process until your tech director is ready to play through some of them. So here's some important things to remember. Make lots of in and out points to help keep things organized, but don't stress too much about it. This is all about multitasking. Remember that the game does not stop while you're prepping your replay. Be alert. Try to vary which camera angle you use, but once again, don't stress too much about it. Actually seeing the play in the replay is your first priority. When the tech director is ready to take your replays, first, double click down on the first replay in your playlist you want to send. As your tech counts you down to when they will switch to replays, hit play when they hit one in the countdown. You want to hit play a second or so before the tech director switches to slow-mo, because you don't want them to switch to your feed and then not have it play for a split second and then begin, because it just doesn't look as clean. So now they're starting to play through, and you could just let all the clips play, but there's a reason that the terms slow-mo and replay are often interchanged. As you're playing through your replays, now is when you get to use your T-Bar. But if the T-Bar looks too scary, don't worry, you can use the buttons right next to it. So as the clips are playing through, they'll automatically play at 100% speed, real time. But half the fun of doing replay is getting to slow it down. So as the most exciting part of the play is about to happen, as the basket's about to go into the hoop, or the player's about to spike it, you can slow it down. In order to slow it down, you can either drag the T-Bar down from its default position at the top to a place where you like the speed. A little lower than halfway down should be a good starting place if you're unsure. Alternatively, you can just hit the 33% or 25% button to slow it down to that speed. Once that most exciting part of the play ends, 
ramp the speed back up to 100% by either dragging the T-bar back up to the top or just by hitting the 100% button. Repeat this process for any replays you play. And if you have a bunch of replays ready in your playlist and you don't happen to get through all of them in one plane, remember which one was the last one you got through so that the next time the tech director switches to replay, you can start off with the right one. To help you remember, you can edit the title of the clip by clicking on the last replay you went through, hitting enter, and adding in something like the word done. So here's some important things to remember. Start playing the replays a second before the tech director switches to your feed. And also make sure to let the tech director know if you're on the last replay. This way, you can avoid showing a pause screen as they switch on and off your feed. Slow the play down right before the climax of it using the T-bar or the buttons right next to it. Then ramp it right back up to 100 after this part happens. You gave the replays a descriptive title for a reason. Make sure your tech director is relaying the title of each replay to the announcers so they know what they should be talking about. Congratulations, you just got through your first game. There's not much to do now but break down. However, before you start shutting down, find out from your tech director if he wants you to play through all the highlights one last time so that they're all in one convenient location at the end of the recording if anybody wants to use them. To do this, just play through every page that has a highlight on it at full speed. Once you show all of them, it's time to stop the recording and exit. Go back to the main screen and click onto the shutdown menu. Hit shutdown 3 play. Turn off the monitor and you're done. You should now have a basic understanding of how to use the new tech 3 play system to send replays for Eye in the Sky or whatever other shoot you're working on. Keep in mind though, this is only what I know about the system and I gave you my preferences for small nuances of use. There's so much more the 3Play can be used for, and I wish you the best of luck in discovering and mastering these uses in your time with the 3Play. Try it out and get comfortable with it. Figure out what works best for you and the production you're working on, and you'll be using the 3Play like a pro in no time. Good luck in your journey mastering the new tech 3Play. I've been Dan Klein, thanks for watching.